Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from No More Spare Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be checking out a Linux gaming operating system called Nobara made by Glorious Eggroll. So let's get started. Now, if you remember about a month ago, I actually did a video review on Fedora installing into my system and using it for a first time. Well, and that is because of this operating system. Now, I didn't wanna do a review on this gaming Linux operating system, Nobara, until I actually got the basics down with Fedora. And that is why I made that video and used it for at least a month just to feel it out and learn the basis of it. And I feel like I needed to do that just so I could give this operating system a little bit of justice because I never used Fedora before. Now, at the end of my experience with Fedora, I have realized that it is a solid workstation. It was very stable for me, I had no issues. There were some times where I ran into a little bit of problems due to not knowing that I had to use third-party installers for graphic cards and stuff like that, but that's just on my end, and that's what I really needed to learn before I understood this operating system. Now, if you guys are new to Linux or Linux gaming in general, Glorious Eggroll is a huge name in this part. He created this software called Proton GE, which anytime that you are looking for a game compatibility or to see if something would work, you would go towards his package and see if it could run on your system. He would add a lot of patches and wine updates just so specific games would work on his version of Proton. So there is no doubt in my mind that this operating system is built for gaming because these patches and kernel fixes are built into the system. Now he is also a Red Hat engineer. So moving towards Fedora, which is more familiar grounds to him, makes sense to me. And I really like that he did that because Fedora is a really good operating system. To jump into it, um, here we have his website, the Nobara project. If I'm saying that wrong, let me know. The Nobara project, to put it simply, it's modified version of Fedora Linux with user-friendly fixes added to it. Fedora is a very good workstation, which I completely believe. However, anything involved with any kinds of third-party proprietary packages is usually absent from the fresh install, which is true. I could not get uh, the standard NVIDIA graphic cards to install and certain other things that I had. Uh, a typical point-and-click user can often struggle with how to get a lot of things working beyond the basic browser and office, which is true. That's how come I had to like use this operating system. But once I did, I understood there's RPM Fusion and a lot of third-party apps that you could install to get things working. But for a new user who'd never used Fedora or Linux in general, that is actually completely different from what they're used to. Now, there are some important things that are missing from Fedora, which is true, especially with regards to uh, gaming, including wine dependencies. Uh, OBS Studio, yes, that's where I had a little bit of a problem with. Uh, Third-party codecs, GStreamer, uh, NVIDIA drivers, and even small package fixes. Yes, that is so true. This project aims to fix most of those issues, offering better gaming, streaming, and content creation experience out of the box, which I have received from this. I mean, I had no problems installing any games. I installed a game from Epic, I installed Star Citizen, I installed a game from Steam. Uh, none of which I had any problems running on this operating system. It should be clarified that this uh, distribution is not to be considered a Fedora spin. We are a completely independent project from Fedora and there are no Fedora developers or parties directly involved. We use Fedora packages, code, and repository. That's the extent of it. So he's clarifying that it is not a Fedora spin, just to make that clear for you guys. Now, going down to the list of bug fixes, you can see like just off the bat, if you don't understand it, it doesn't matter. It's just showing that there are a lot of kernel patches and fixes just for gaming or 3D in general. So uh, you have patches for Fluke, F-Sync, Wine Sync, uh, some AMD fixes here. There's like a bunch of stuff that he would incorporate into this uh, image that will you will actually run into when you run certain games. If you are dead set on trying to get a game working, this is a good base to get this working off of because it has all these kernel fixes in the operating system layer. Anyway, to check it out a little bit, uh, there was a couple of things that I did like about this operating system. One that I didn't like is the wallpaper in my sense. I think it could do better with a, maybe a light blue wallpaper. I, I just like that right now. Purple is a little bit too much flashy for me, but I did like the fact that he is using dash to panel, which is something I would normally do, and also arc menu, which is also something I usually do. Now, as far as the application goes, um, accessories, this is standard. Now this is new. I've actually never seen connections and it's a known 
boom thing. So I started using this just because I saw it on this operating system and I really like it. It's for RDP and VNC. Instead of using Remina, you could use connections to connect to your RDP desktops. Uh, extension manager, this is also pre-installed. Uh, it doesn't come with the operating system, but you have to install that later on. Um, Proton Up QT. If you guys are not familiar with that, this will actually give you an easy installer to install um, his Wine versions. So if you got different versions of Wine that you want to install on your Steam, this is where you would use it just so you don't have to manually do it. Even though you can go to his GitHub and download it, this just does it automatically. Um, then he has, let's see, what else? Wine tricks, normal stuff, okay. Next page, we have education. We got Excel or math games. I did install a couple of games on here and what's pre-installed is Lutris, ProtonUp, Steam, and G Overlay. This is another new application I did not know, which is really cool. G Overlay allows you to actually test out your graphic card as well as modify the visual aspects of Mango HUD. So I'm looking at this 3D right now and this is my standard Mango HUD screen. You could actually go to the metrics and like check off the things you wanna see and then it'll actually modify the Mango HUD. And then you have a few other things that you could test on this. So I really actually like this application. I might be using it more often on my other Linux installs to get um, a couple of Mango HUD option setting and to test out graphic cards. Now, moving down the list, uh, in games, you also have Proton Up, which we explained before. Uh, graphics, you do have Blender installed in here, which is great for this operating system because all the 3D fixes are done. Uh, you also have Inkscape, and uh, this is a, if you got HP software, a five in one, a three in one, the scanner, printer, and um, fax machine, I think it's called. Uh, he has a pre installed application for it. I guess he uses HP at home, uh, that's why it's installed. Then you have your normal office stuff. Uh, programming boxes, this is uh, for VM, virtual machines. So instead of using VirtualBox, Linux uses something called boxes, which I really like. Guys, if you never tested boxes before, uh, it's a pretty cool software to install operating systems where you could just click, select the operating system that you want. And if it's not here, you could download your own or you could you know, choose another one. There's a bigger list that you can download. And if you want Ubuntu, you just click on it, it'll spin up the VM for you. Um, what else does he have? sound and video obs studio which is pre-installed no configurations needed it just works out of the box the problem that you have is to connect the graphic driver instead you could install obs studio for ubuntu or anything else but the problem is usually connecting it to use the graphic card to decode or encode uh you know your footage that's where you have to like play around with the settings and that's already pre-done in here um you also have kden live which is a video editor and VLC media player, okay. Uh, oh, I was just here. System tools is your standard tools, boxes to configure, uh, your software, utilities, which is your standard utilities that you would get for Fedora. All right, so that is all your standard applications that you get with this, which is pretty good. Um, like I said, I learned about three or four applications that I've never used before, which is Go, Live, uh, Go Overlay and a few other things that I found here, and it, it works perfect. I like it. Now, if I go over to Terminal and I search out for Neo Fetch, this will give me my operating system and the information that you need to know. And I am running a Ryzen 7 1700, which is very old by now, to, in today's standard. Uh, I have a 1070 in here, and I got 16 gigs of RAM, and I'm using Nabora Linux 36, kernel 5.18, and that is about it. I don't know why the resolution is off, because I am at 1080, but it's not 720, but it does this. It's weird. Now, I'm going to show you some demos of some games that I was playing, which is Star Citizen. It Obviously, Star Citizen, this is the newest version, 3.17.2. And during the recording of this, I actually ran into my first bug. And this patch just came out two days ago. And this bug uh, did not allow me to get out of the elevator. I mean, get into the elevator. I was literally stuck there trying to get in, try some other tricks. Anyway, I ended up killing myself and starting up at a hospital. But still, that I, I was, I just ran into bugs just trying to run that game. Has nothing to do with the operating system, but just to let you know, 3.17.2 does work on Fedora without any special technique other than the installer that I showed you on my gaming channel. Now, next up, we have Lawnmower Simulator. This game is free this week, and I actually downloaded it and kind of enjoyed playing with it. Just moving, mowing the lawn, even though I have my own lawn to mow, 
I'd rather just play the game to mow my lawn and start my landscaping empire. So I was testing that from Epic Game Store and it worked fine. Last but not least, I started playing a Steam game called Beam NG, which is the latest patch update. And this latest patch is a lot of fun. They actually added a lot of updates to it and game modes and stuff. But the only problem with this is that this does have texture problems, which is not a problem of um, glorious egg roll. There is a fix for it that I've seen on ProtonDB where you just reload the textures and it should work. But it does run on this operating system and it runs actually fairly decent. I didn't put the mango hut on here for the tattoo, but yeah, it ran pretty good. I didn't have any problems with it other than textures going in and out. Now, so far, any game that I've downloaded and installed worked on this operating system, especially the older titles, they didn't have any problems. I just wanted to test games that it's out of the normal just to see if it worked, and it does. This, I do really like this operating system, and it's a good base to work off. If you wanted to use this not only for gaming, but for like, office work, th this operating system is pretty good. There are mentions that there are a few bugs with this operating system and there are gonna be bugs if you're gonna run into it because it is still experimental, that he's still building it up and installing stuff and updating it. So you might run into a few bugs, but during the time that I've been using it for the past week, I have not ran into any issues, especially installing any games. I had not had any issues with this operating system. Anyway, that is it for me guys. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. I urge you to check this operating system out because it is really cool. I maybe change the wallpaper, but other than that, it is great. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.